Tell me something about each other that the fans wouldn't know. A lot of people don't know that Eddie, and I, I'll, be, I'll bring this up since I'm the art guy, but this guy is a great artist. He, at, when he was young, you know, at junior high, teenage years and all that, was a fantastic artist. And I, I know that, that he considered actually studying art and, and, going, in, and going to be a visual artist. And uh, he, he's, he still dabbles in it a little bit. Every now and then we'll get him to draw some stuff. And he, he's crazy talented at that, so. No, if it, you know, Jerry Dale's pretty, he's pretty sharing of a lot of things he does because he's got such a great spirit and such a great heart for what he loves, you know, whether it's uh, a great brandy, an amazing, beautiful piece of art, a wonderful, insightful book that can perhaps change your life, you know. He seems to be a connoisseur of all those things. I do feel him in his way as a Renaissance man as well. Um, but there's a lot of depth to him, a lot of people see him as the zany guy that's dancing, and the colorful one, but there's quite a universe within this person that a lot of people aren't aware of. And I think uh, uh, that when I look at him and I, I uh, we travel together, I'm reminded of that all the time. So um, I enjoy his company. You know, we have a lot, a, a lot of great time together. So did you really go run a museum in the meantime? I had a contemporary gallery in Nashville for nine years. Yeah, and uh, still a um, huge visual art guy. I mean, that's something that I have loved forever and, and still do. You know, so I have a, my love for music and then I have my love for art. I mean, music is an art form in itself, but uh, it, I, so I don't do much art things other than still collect and mm -hmm. stuff, but I, I do, I, they do put it on me to try to like art direct the album packaging and stuff like that, which I love to do. I've had a great time putting that stuff together, so. You grew up in East LA, right? I did. Parents, were they encouraging? Were they, were, were they an influence in this? Or was it just people you listened to? Well, for me, my father uh, was, uh, has everything to do with me being a musician today. Uh, he wasn't really a musician in the sense that he knew a lot of songs. He knew a few things on guitar. But it was my way of connecting to him and to his heart, to his soul as a child. You know, I was just trying to find that spot as a boy, you know, looking up to his dad. And uh, I found that we connected on that level, and uh, he was such a big music lover. He introduced me to everything, you know? And so my experience was, uh, yeah, he was super supportive of me trying to learn something about it because it's the way we connected. But then when I started taking it serious, it was like, wait a minute, you know, you, you're going to do that for a living? Are you kidding? You should get a job. You should, you know, it was that sort of thing. But eventually he came around. <laughs> you know, luckily, you know. Nobody in my family was a music, musician, um, but I did grow up in a time was the tail end of where, where everybody had to take piano lessons. You know, or, or I, I, I don't. I guess my, not all families are like that, but there was a time where you had to take piano, and everybody had a piano in their house. You know, and I just happened to be the oldest of four who actually took to the piano. They, everyone had to take some lessons, but it, I stuck with it. So. Describe your style, both as a band and individually. <laughs> I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what I think it is. I, I, I like to tell people, in a world of fast food hamburgers, we're like the best filet mignon, Oscar style with a lobster tail on the side. That's the best in the world. <laughs> What else can I say? You know what I'm saying. I do know, know what you're saying. That. That's yeah. what I'm feeling. Is that your individual style too? <laughs> I'd like to think so. Yeah. Sometimes I get it wrong, I think, but hey, I'm always <laughs> trying. <laughs> I'll, I'll have some, some glitter on me. Uh, no, yeah, I gotta have the glitter that. around, you know. <laughs> After all these years, you're still having that much fun. Absolutely, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's a ball, all of it is, you know. Um, you know, the stage is always, uh, something that is the most fun of all. I got the best seat in the house with the be best musicians in the world. You know, this is a moment in my life right now that I really do believe like these are the best times. So I'm trying to savor as much as I can, you know. We, we, we work hard and we put every bit of our soul into this. Uh, and so, you know, while we're here, I think we all make it count. We all try to. And then there were the songs like Dance the Night Away, which didn't make it in this country. When well, you go to England, what do they ask you to play? 
and what's at every wedding reception? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's, it's, it's one of those songs that if you, if you meet anybody from the UK and said, do you know the song Dance the Night Away? Like, oh, by the Mavericks, of course. You know, you know, it's one of those songs that just became so huge. Why? Uh, I don't know. Why there and not here? Well, uh, I, once again, I would say country radio probably wasn't interested in it because it was, it was, just, it was a great catchy song, but it didn't fit their idea of what country music was. In the UK, they play all kinds of music at all times. I mean, you could turn on the radio, and I mean, they have limited radio stations, so, uh, but you know, it was a time where you could hear Prince, before, and then you could hear like the, the Mavericks, you know. It's more wide open and, and inclusive over there in terms of what pop music is to them. And I think that somehow that song struck a chord at that moment in time because it is a collection of energy just at a certain time. And when it hits, it hits, you know, and it's a phenomenon. But I think uh, around that time, uh, you know, radio, uh, certainly pop radio and, and rock and roll radio was, was a bit of an open format. And I think that song just happened to fit into there and it had just enough Western-esque to it that I think it caught on and uh, it's not, over there, they don't hear a lot of that, you know? So I think it was just a, a moment in time, I, I think, if anything else.